Hi everyone. This is to further test the uh, flyback uh, to a uh, high voltage uh, coil. And I have uh, put together a device here that we have our low voltage coil that we, were, we are going to send a pulse into. Uh, we're going to start with a 50% duty cycle. Uh, which is basically what my uh, signal uh, or pulse generator here can do and that's what I'll be using to send a specific voltage and we're going to test it uh, straight to the coil and the way I've set up this device is I have the I-Core here that's uh, just leaning against with a paper air gap uh, at the bottom there so that's a sheet of paper and then there's an air gap there that you can see. So we're not going to do any lockup because lockups are not necessarily an indication of true power uh, or the force of the magnetic field. Uh, so what I have is my scale here attached to it. So when the scale, I'm going to pull it, when the scale starts reading grams, uh, there is no uh, change in the air gap. This is solid steel here and I made it exactly so the air gap stays always the same and uh, these scales don't pull like a spring scale uh, it's just a very a pressure sensitive uh, resistor in there so uh, this will be a very valid test to find out the difference in the force of the magnetic field and this is uh, going to give us uh, some true uh, results this transformer here is not even being used it's just uh, hot glued down and the scale is hot glued there and this uh, transformer here the, the device under test is the one that's uh, going to be used and uh, is also hot glued there so everything's hard you know tight together and not uh, moving the power supply we're going to use is this uh, power supply here uh, we're going to be uh, feeding that power supply we're going to start with exactly two volts and it's going to go in this meter here and th this is current so this would be millivolts from this decimal here don't look at that decimal that doesn't count uh, I have a more um, I have a 0.1 ohm resistor here that I'm measuring the voltage across so basically our decimal point is here so these are millivolts these three digits here and that is obviously our voltage so it's voltage times current and uh, like I said this will be the pulse circuit that will be used and all I'll do is readjust the duty cycle and I'm always going to keep this uh, at the same level so first we're going to test the uh, force of the magnetic field with just the primary here of this microwave oven transformer and then we're going to connect we have this diode here and uh, this lead here that will connect the uh, secondary, the high voltage coil on with these two leads, these two wires here. And that'll be the next test. So first we'll just establish a baseline uh, magnetic field strength of just this, uh, of the work this inductor can do. And then we're going to try it with the high voltage coil through the flyback of this inductor into this one. This is not actually the ideal setup. I have to readjust because basically the on time of this is also being affected in this inductor here. Really what you want to have is a true isolation between the two. When this is turned on, you don't want this one to be uh, activated by the impulse. So unfortunately I can't add a capacitor on this one here because what would happen is the capacitor would start actually uh, loading by when this is activated and it would get, wouldn't give us the true results. So if you remember how powerful it got with the capacitor, well now we can't use it because of that, but still the results are very, very uh, interesting and we will see that. So here I've set up a list of, you know, basically we're just testing the magnetic field strength. Here I'm just going to test one, we're in no flyback, two volts. So it'll actually be 230 uh, milliamps that we'll be putting through. So it'll be 460 watts. And we'll continue, basically every test will be uh, 460 watts uh, input. And I have the scope here set up on my uh, 0.1 ohm uh, resistor shunt there. Um, and 
that's a 1%, but we're not going to be doing calculations here. These meters here are good enough, and we can even check those meters there. Everything should correspond. Um, this is just to look at the frequency. And the frequency is somewhere around 28 hertz that we're going to be using. So I'm trying to simulate the pulses of a motor here and uh, looking at that. So let us begin the test. So all I need to do now is actually turn on the scale first. And the scale will be uh, at zero. And we're going to look at this in grams. And uh, there you see my air gap. as. And now I'm going to start it, and you'll see the air gap won't uh, change. So the device is started, and the air gap is still exactly the same. And that is the amount of uh, grams uh, that we are uh, pulling with that magnetic force uh, of just the primary coil. So 75 grams, and uh, if we look, this is what we have, two volts, pretty well. Uh, 230 uh, milliamps and uh, if we look here this uh, actually bounces it's not capable of uh, keeping it steady this is why I use these meters because they have these two capacitors in between the resistor so it, it smooths out the uh, voltage and I get a much more stable reading with that excellent uh, device to uh, test uh, pulse circuits so there you go so we're going to write down our 75 grams here. So we get 75 grams of pull force with uh, that amount of power in the primary. So now I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to uh, attach the secondary. And I can't just do that right now because actually I have to then put down the uh, pulse width to reduce it because when I do that, uh, the uh, primary takes a little bit more current and I want to keep everything equal. So I can't do this with just one hand because I'm using the other hand to hold the camera. So I have to pause it and uh, we'll sit, do the next test. Okay, so now we're ready for the next test. I've got it uh, calibrated exactly and the scale is set to zero and all I do is flick the switch and again have a look at the uh, air gap will stay the same I'll start it up so it is started at this time and this is exactly our same uh, input as we had 2 volts at 230 uh, milliamps and uh, that's the other meter there but it's not stable so <laughs> and uh, this is uh, the amount of uh, pull force that we're registering so 350 grams and you didn't get to see it uh, move, so what I'll do is I'll just sh shut the circuit off. As you see, it's off now. And uh, we're going to reset our scale. Scale is reset, and now I'll flick on the circuit. And there you go, in exact, exact amount. This is a very accurate uh, system here. We're getting a consistent result every time, and everything is exactly the same. This is our, uh, I don't know if I showed you the, uh, this uh, before, but anyways, here we are. Uh, that is the waveform. Uh, that is a bit the data there. So uh, this is the test uh, with the uh, flyback now uh, going back into the secondary and obviously you see it has a huge uh, amplification uh, uh, effect on the magnetic field of the uh, transformer. So that is enough for this test and I will shut it down. Uh, for those who still might not believe that, I'll res reset that, give you another shot. Okay, there you go. My I turn on the switch and there you go exactly again the same reading okay so now we're gonna write that down so we have 350 grams and now our next test is we're going to um, we're going to go for high voltage because in my uh, work with this uh, motor here I have been saying that a uh, higher voltage with a smaller pulse width would give us more work on the flyback 
and uh, people thought I was kind of losing it. But anyways, we'll see how uh, how uh, that works out. So first, we're going to do it with no flyback, 20 volts uh, at 0 0.023 instead of 230. Uh, 0.023 milliamps it comes exactly to 460 uh, 460 milliwatts so that's what uh, I'm gonna do now pause the camera and set it all up for that okay we're now ready I have it uh, at 20 volts and uh, I will start the circuit and obviously now the uh, test at the higher voltage with the uh, flyback removed from the uh, secondary high voltage coil and we're just pulsing now this uh, low voltage coil obviously at a smaller duty cycle so that we have exactly the same amount of watts going in and that's what we're going to check now and our scale is just to be started and if you have a look our air gap is exactly the same We are going to start the circuit and we have now 20 volts at 0 0.023 uh, milliamps and that is what we are getting also on the other uh, power supply. Uh, there's a small voltage difference but this is more accurate uh, because there is a small voltage drop from one capacitor to the other. We're measuring really what's truly going at this point here. So, uh, like I said, our air gap is exactly the same, and we'll look at our scale, and oh, we got nothing. So the guys are right uh, that there is no uh, value in putting a higher voltage with a smaller uh, on time. It uh, doesn't make a stronger uh, magnetic field, obviously, with a standard configuration like this. So there you go, you're seeing it there and we will uh, shut that off and just so that you think maybe I'm playing some kind of a trick here or something I'm going to start that over and I will turn on the switch and you see zero ram this is not pulling at all you can hear it but it has no strong magnetic field so that is just the primary so now we're going to uh, register our result. So that's not very good. We got zero gram on that one there. So not a strong magnetic field. So now I will stop the camera and readjust it with the uh, flyback going to the secondary. Okay, we're now ready. Everything is uh, calibrated. Our uh, secondary is attached to capture the flyback of the primary and we will see our strength of the magnetic field. Our air gap is identical, hasn't been changed. And I will start it now. And you're seeing the uh, current and voltage exactly is the same. And this is what we are pulling in grams. So you didn't see me start it, so that's fair enough. I'll shut it off and we're going to zero our scale once more. Everything is the same. I will start it. 635 grams. I'll stop it. Zero the scale. Start it one more time. 635 grams. So we're getting perfectly consistent result. Our air gap has been perfectly consistent throughout the tests and that is the reality of it. So uh, I think uh, it's pretty clear that there is an advantage uh, if you have the correct 635 grams. So if you have the correct uh, configuration, it looks like there is definitely a gain uh, in a higher voltage, a smaller pulse width at uh, still maintaining the same amount of input compared to uh, what we have achieved here. 
basically uh, pretty well close to uh, double from what I'm seeing here and uh, that is the first basic results and from this point on I don't know how much more I will be sharing I think this is uh, quite a bit and uh, I think it may be up to others to replicate this and share and obviously there are very uh, unique and great ways that we could use this. Thanks. Bye now.